up to the beginning of Christmas can all sometimes take over our attention. And so I would invite you to now settle yourself in your pew. Notice the angels that are among us in this sanctuary. Take a deep breath as we prepare for worship. angels that appear in the story of Jesus' birth would have been very comfortable in our world of tweets and texts and hashtags. Their messages were often short and to the point, their favorite line being, do not be afraid. As we look at the stories of these winged messengers, <coughs> The messages to Zechariah and Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. We will contemplate what messages we can offer that will fly in the face of a culture of fear and bring more hope and more peace and more joy and more love. All of this to our world. We begin with an angelic visit to Zechariah. Now it was just another day for Zechariah at the temple. It was his priestly turn to make sure that everything was done properly and in good order. But it turned into something quite different when an angel showed up at the altar. Jesus, guiding spirit. Grant us openness to hear your message. us, among us, and within us, 
we sing together. Do not be afraid. to do more than say and hear them. God wants us to sing them, to breathe them in, to play with them, to pray with them, and to share them with the world. Let us stand in body or in spirit and sing our opening hymn in your black hymnal number 122, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Verses 57 through 80. Uh, page 52 in the, um, your pew Bible. During the rule of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron. They were both relig uh, righteous before God, blameless in their observance of all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to become pregnant, and they both were very old. One day, Zechariah was serving as priest before God because his priestly division was on duty. Following the customs of priestly service, he was chosen by lottery to go into the Lord's sanctuary and burn incense. All the people who gathered in to worship were praying outside during this hour of incense burning. An angel from the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was startled and overcome with fear. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife's wife, Elizabeth, will give birth to your son, and you must name him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many people will rejoice at his birth. 
for he will be great in the Lord's eye. He must not drink wine or liquor. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will bring many Israelites back to the Lord their God. He will go forth before the Lord, equipped with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will turn the hearts of fathers back to their children, and he will turn the disobedient to righteous patterns of thinking. He will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? My wife and I are very old. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in God's presence. I was sent to speak to you and to bring this good news to you. Know this, what I have spoken will come true at the proper time. But because you didn't believe, you will remain silent, unable to speak, until the day when these things happen. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they wondered why he was in the sanctuary for such a long time. When he came out, he was unable to speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he gestured to them and couldn't speak. When he completed the days of his priestly service, he returned home. Afterwards, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant. She kept to herself for five months, saying, This is the Lord's doing. He has shown his favor to me by removing my disgrace among other people. Hear God's message for God's people. So much hope in that music. Our scripture reading continues in Luke. And when the time came for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a boy. Her neighbors and relatives celebrated with her because they had heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy. On the eighth day, it came to circumcise the child. They wanted to name him Zechariah because that was his father's name. But his mother replied, no, his name will be John. And they said to her, none of your relatives have that name. And then they began gesturing to his father to see what he wanted to call him. And after asking for a tablet, he surprised everyone by writing, his name is John. At that moment, Zechariah was able to speak again and he began praising God. All their neighbors were filled with awe, and everyone throughout the Judean highlands talked about what had happened. All who heard about this considered it carefully. They said, what then will this child be? Indeed, the Lord's power is with him. Now John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied, Bless the Lord God of Israel, because he has come to help and has delivered his people. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in his servant David's house, just as he said through the mouths of his holy prophets long ago. He has brought salvation from our enemies and from the power of all those who hate us. He has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and remembered his holy covenant, the solemn pledge he made to our ancestor Abraham. He has granted that we would be rescued from the power of our enemies so that we would serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness in God's eyes for as long as we live. You, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. You will tell his people how to be saved through the forgiveness of their sins because of our God's deep, deep compassion. The dawn from heaven will break upon us to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide us on the path of peace. And the child grew up, becoming strong in character. 
who was in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. Here ends this morning's reading. Let us pray. Gracious God, the story of John's birth seems so unbelievable to us. And yet, amid that story is so much hope. Hope for a child to be born. Hope for the message that he brings. Hope for the preparation of our Lord's arrival to bring peace on earth. As we consider these words, may our hearts be filled with hope, and the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of us be acceptable to you, our Prince of Peace, our Savior. Amen. Happy New Year. No, it is. It's the Christian year. And today is the first day of the new year. The Christian year begins the season of Advent, and this way of beginning is itself significant. Now you might think that the year would begin with the trumpets of Easter, or the softness of Christmas Eve, or the fires of Pentecost. But on the contrary, we begin in the shadows of despair, of war, of sorrow and hate. For it is precisely here that the God of grace will arrive. And accordingly, it's precisely here that we are all called to light candles of hope and peace and joy and love and life against those shadows. It's worth remembering this deep poetry as the Christian New Year begins, we join hands and we enter the darkness, waiting and singing and praying anew for the light. Now we wait for the light today with hope. This waiting cannot be passive waiting, the kind of waiting that believes that God doesn't need us in order to make the world a safer, better place for all people. This is the message that the angels who appear to Zechariah and Mary and Joseph and the shepherds bring to us this Advent season. They bring news, yes, but they also invite participation in the story. The message is, well, God is doing thus and such, and you are part of it. In order for that to happen, we're going to need more hope and more peace and more joy and more love and more life all around. God needs us to spread the word. Now we get that word from lots of places, but the one we're focusing on this season are the angels. Yes, I believe that there are angels among us. God is with us through them and through us, sharing the message of more hope. Or for those in the tech world, hashtag more hope. The English word angel comes from the Latin angelus, derived from the Greek translation of angelos, meaning messenger. It's the same Greek word from which the word for gospel, or good news, derives, evangelion, or euangelion. Angels are announcers, word bringers, heralds of glad tidings, and therefore life changers by proxy. With the famous exception of the six-winged seraphs we sing about in our hymns, angels in the Bible don't usually have wings. But nobody seems to know that. Because the angels through the ages hardly depict an angel without wings. Look around. Wings everywhere. Still, I like to think of them with wings because it's really cool. Angels are intelligent, spiritual entities who exist to do God's bidding. Because that bidding often entails delivering messages to mortals, occasionally angels take the form, as three of them did when Abraham welcomed angels without knowing it, under the oak of Mamre. But angels are normally invisible, 
part of the world beyond the thin veil that we refer to when we say, I believe in God, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. So what do we do with these winged but not winged, invisible but appearing angels? Likely an angel visiting us today would need to start with, do not be afraid, just as almost every angel in the scripture did. It's not for nothing that many instances the first thing the angel says is, fear not. Their appearance surprised the you-know-what out of those who crossed their path. They were a wake-up call, and they came with life-altering messages. Now that's true for Zechariah in our scripture today. The angel arrived with a message of hope. He would have a child with his life, wife, Elizabeth, and they would name him John. And Zechariah's like, yeah, right. And this aged priest is the husband of Elizabeth, who was from the same clan, meaning the same subgroup within one of the 12 tribes of Israel. In this case, the house of Aaron, the priestly tribe, also known as Levites. This means the child will be doubly priestly from both mom's side and dad's side, a very privileged class. Good news for the family line, and therefore Zechariah, and good news for the child. And as I said, it was just another day at the temple for Zechariah. It was his turn to go into the, into the sanctuary, and it did turn into something quite different. It's a moment of God's Holy Spirit breaking into the ordinary, mundane world and bringing with it God's preferred and promised hope for the future. Have you ever had a moment in your life after which you knew nothing would ever be the same? In the midst of great change, hope is always a welcome thing. Advent can remind us that God makes us ready for whatever unknown may come our way and calls us to be messengers of more hope in an ever-changing world. Later, when the angel's words are shown true, Zechariah sings a declaration of God's purpose as a message of hope to the world in danger of losing hope. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. And this is known as the Song of Zechariah, traditionally known as the Benedictus in Latin, good word. On this day, when John is barely a week old, his father is filled with the hope that accompanies new life. It is the hope of salvation for all people, Jews and Gentiles, insiders and outsiders, rich and poor, blind and lame, tax collectors and sinners, women and men, old and young, fishers and farmers, Samaritans and soldiers, lepers and lawyers, and all the others. It is the prelude to our Savior, our bringer of salvation, prince of peace. We too can sing with Zechariah with the same hope for new life, a new life in the light of Christ. Angels are symbols of God's messages to us, symbols of God's presence with us. The feathers symbolize the spirit of God, the ability to span any distance between heaven and earth and the freedom of flight to new heights in our lives as we claim God's possibilities for our lives and for our world. Now to help us remember this through the whole season, each week you will receive a feather to carry with you. Today you received a purple one as you came in, I hope. And if not, you can pick one up from the table downstairs in the old Sunday school room. Take it with you. Attach it to a bag, attach it to a keychain, shove it in your pocket, in your purse, over your rear view mirror, in your visor. Hopefully when you see those feathers, you will be reminded to keep your eyes open for God's messengers in your life and God's power that makes you a messenger of hope in the midst of each day, in each encounter with each person that you meet. The messages you share with others make a difference, bringing hope to others. 
One person can and does make a difference no matter how significant our contribution seems. God is calling us to become a people ready to be messengers of hope through our words and actions. You know, angels travel over time and space, and they change the future. Now, science fiction lovers today often fantasize about time travel, but they worry about going back in time and altering the future or altering history. But we rarely consider how one small change might change the future and bring God's kingdom, kingdom now and later. Angels are God's messengers, and their messages change the world. We are called into that work, and our messages can change the world too. May we, together with all that God offers and all the angels, bring hope to a weary, dark world. May we bless the way the angels bless. May we remember the angelic mes message of fear not, relying on God's power to empower us to be that hope in the world. Our responsive hymn is in your red hymnal number 111. It is of the Father's love begotten, and we will remain seated while we sing. <laughs> not speak a lot, but sometimes, like Zechariah, we hold things inside. And God knows that just as well. So we bring the things that we have spoken and those that we have left unspoken to God in prayer. God of all hope, in this moment we pray for all those who are in need of hope. We hear your message, do not be afraid. Amidst the joy of the season, there are people and experiences that don't seem so hopeful. We pray that others will hear your message, too. We pray for those on our prayer list. We pray for the refugees around the world, for those who have been victims of violence, extremism, war, and oppression.
God of all hope. In this moment, we give thanks for all the ways we have experienced your presence among us. In the words and actions that bring hope in the midst of despair. In the people who work silently in the background to bring your love to people. In the healing that you offer. For all who proclaim your reign on earth, we join their refrain, do not be afraid. And we will not be afraid. We know you are here and that you hear and know all that is on our hearts and minds. We offer it all to you, knowing that your son Jesus reigns with you. And it is in his name that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, God of hope, we share these gifts with you with all the hope that we can muster, that your love will spread around the world through the message of peace that your angels bring and for the message of peace that we promise to bring as your messengers as well. Bless these gifts and use them with all the hope. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul's letter to the Hebrews includes a wonderful word. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. As we enter this season of Advent, it is right and good that we gather at the table of Jesus Christ, whose ministry was centered in showing hospitality, inviting us all no matter whether we feel at home in our faith or at times like strangers, to know the grace of God that is already and always awaiting us if we will be open to it. Let us set aside any hesitation, any obstacle to the invitation. In this silence, we offer to God our confession of the ways that we turn away from the fullness of love. No, 
know this. The things you have confessed before God, and even those things you have no words for at this moment, are all being lifted away on the wings of God's love. Be assured of your freedom as forgiven and beloved children of the most gracious God. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. This is indeed a heavenly table. One that connects us with all who have come before us and those who will come after us. It is outside of time. It is also outside of space, regardless of where you have been or where you are in life. You are invited to this table. Whether you are rich or poor or young or old, experienced with faith or unfamiliar with it, this table is open to all who wish to know Jesus Christ and to know him more. And so I say, God be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. In the beginning you set everything in motion, creator of heaven and earth. With bold ingenuity you splashed the sky with lights and stars, sun and moon, wind and clouds, rainbows and winged ones. With the word you brought forth the waters and the waves and the mountains and the valleys. And you called forth our lives from the dust, and you called it good. And so we proclaim this ancient song with all of the saints and angels, holy, holy, holy God, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, blessed are you. You sent your son, Jesus, your message made flesh to dwell upon us. Harbinger of hope, prince of peace, cup of joy, bread of love. Through Jesus you gave birth to your church and sealed a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And we thank you for this feast and for your Son, a true angel among us. Amen. And so we remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, at a meal with his friends, he took the bread and he blessed it. And he broke it. And he shared it with his friends and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Every time you eat this bread, remember me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. And he shared it with his friends. And he said, this cup is the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink it, remember me. And so as we anticipate the birth of hope anew, we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Touch us, O Spirit, with your transforming power. Open us to your promise of resurrection from fear and death. In partaking of these elements, make us a people ready as your body in and for an anxious world. Let us become your messengers of hope in all that we say and do. Make us one in this purpose, O God. Make us one in you, Lord Christ. Amen. Friends, these elements are all gluten-free, so they are safe and available to any who wish to know Jesus more. This is God's table, Jesus' table. It is for you to take and eat.
when we share this bread, we participate in the story of Jesus Christ bringing hope to a world in darkness. May it be so.
Messenger 2. So I'm inviting you to share our quote meme for the week from our church Facebook page to your Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat accounts and hashtag it, hashtag more hope. Now if all of that sounds like Greek and you are not into social media, I invite you to take the insert, well it's not really an insert, but take the page that has our quote meme in the bulletin and mail it to someone with the message of more hope because we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. And that's a message that all need to hear. Today we started our worship service with Advent hymn and we closed with a Christmas carol. Now traditionally the church waits until Christmas to sing these songs, but in our day, these songs ring through all the air on the radio, <coughs> in stores, and everywhere that holiday tunes are playing. So we'll take our encounters with these messengers for telling the good news of the presence of God coming once again in Christ. Now this week, every time that you hear Hark the Herald Angels Sing, I pray that you will touch your feather. Imagine your purple feather filled with the deep purple of hope and remind yourself that the messengers are with you and you are with the messengers. Now we turn toward the candle of hope and we sing the message that we would each need to take this week. Do not be afraid. We will sing it together. <laughs> you as you go in hope and give the message its wings. Amen. <laughs> 